Steve, what is it about the structure of reality that demands that in order for us to understand cosmology, the understanding of the universe, the origins, the ends, the structure, we must understand subatomic particles and forces, which are the very smallest components of reality. Well, the universe uh, used to be a lot hotter than it is now. The universe is expanding, and just like the freon in the coils of a refrigerator, as it expands, it cools. Uh, there was a time when the temperature of the universe was so high that particles just banging into each other the way heat makes them do uh, gave, had enough energy, there was enough energy in those collisions to produce uh, exotic kinds of elementary particles that in today's universe uh, can only be produced in the highest energy accelerators, which are very expensive to build and aren't part of our everyday <laughs> lives. So uh, if you want to know what was going on when the universe was a millionth of a millionth of a second old, you have to know all about particles that we barely understand today. And often you have to rely on theories that haven't been experimentally tested because we haven't got accelerators big enough to produce these particles in the laboratory. These are particles that are so heavy that they decay almost instantaneously, and so they just aren't present in the world around us. But they played a fundamental role in governing the way the universe expanded in the first million millionth of a second or even earlier. So the common perception that you can just use telescopes to look at the universe and understand stars and galaxies is no longer sufficient. Oh, no, it hasn't been sufficient for some time. The uh, We can look back and see galaxies and stars, well, we see galaxies which we assume are composed of stars, although we can't see them individually, uh, out to a, looking back to a time when the universe was about a tenth uh, the size it is now. You have to understand that when we look at very great distances, it takes a long time for the light to reach us so that whatever we see, we're seeing as it was a long, long time ago. So we can see galaxies, uh, roughly speaking, when, at a time when the universe was a tenth its present size. Uh, earlier than that, there weren't any galaxies or stars. Uh, the universe was filled with particles banging into each other, but they're the familiar particles that we, we know about in the world today, electrons and the particles that make up the nucleus of the atom, protons and neutrons. Uh, but if you go back to a time when the universe was uh, just a few hundred thousand years old, we think 380,000 years old, uh, there's, there's a curtain. Uh, we can't see any earlier with any kind of telescope that we now have because at times earlier than that, uh, the universe was opaque. Radiation couldn't travel far enough to get out to, for us to see it. And what we see is uh, the surface of a sphere that surrounds us in all directions uh, about 10 or 13 billion light years in radius. And we can't see any further than that except by theoretical inference. With the eye of theory, we can see further back and we can see to a time when the universe was a hundredth of a second old and a thousandth of a mm -hmm. second and and so on. But when you go back that far, you really have to know things about the elementary particles that we're just learning today.